your incredible She-Hulk. I just bought them off a kid at a garage sale. Yeah. Uh, uh and, and where does the uh what so what do you have the uh okay oh, 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 okay i can't gold bloom better than gold yeah, bloom, exactly, but... yeah hey friendly folks it's eliza and sam here to recap episode 9 of season 12 of rupaul's drag race spoilers will be plentiful as we break down friday night's episode and scores will be plentiful if you stick around to the end for our scorecard so this week very excited guest judges are jeff Goldbloom, huge star, obviously. I feel like I'm basking in your uh, opalescent glow. And we've got Rachel Bloom from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. And they are judging the Choices 2020 drag presidential debate. They do this challenge every couple years, usually on the year of an election. Tatiana. <laughs> Choices. So we see the queens coming back from the last challenge. We saw Widow was in the bottom, but was able to pull out a lip sync, channeling the soul of Shaka Khan. But this week is set up as Widow's do or die. Is she gonna be able to use that as a turning point and kind of propel herself further in the competition? Or is she gonna let it get to her? We'll see. We will see indeed. And so Rue comes into the workroom. And we find out that the mini challenge is quick drag with a kitty litter sponsor, <laughs> perhaps. I don't know, it was silly. It was fun. So they rescued me from the pound and... <laughs> now I get like five million hits on my sleeping videos. It was cute just to see them get all dressed up as cats. It was very jellical. Maybe there were parts that might have been a, a touch degrading, perhaps. Get it, get it, get it, get it. Oh, oh, get it, where'd it go? We've seen Rue degrade the queens more <laughs> than this. Spank yourself, baby. Yeah, harder, harder, harder. Crystal and Gigi I thought were quite funny. What's this? That's a ball of yarn. An unfinished garment. And Jackie was the winner as the hilarious the kit. The Persian glamour puss. Oh. This is Jackie showing herself to be a consistent competitor. She keeps crushing these mini challenges. Perfect, darling. So after Jackie wins the mini challenge, they're told about the Choices 2020 debate. The special guest during the walkthrough this week is the one, the only, Raven. Always nice to see her. We got to see Rue walking around with Raven, interacting with the queens. Definitely some funny moments there. <laughs> Meet Raven. Hi, Heidi. Nice, such a womanly handshake as well. Thank yes. you. They were kind of reinforcing that this isn't a political challenge as much as a make me laugh challenge. Rue wants this to be more of a snatch game. Raven was this balanced voice saying, hey, it's a competition. You're not actually running for president. Don't take it seriously. Right. Make it stupid. I think that was the advice that helped the queens the most. Definitely, Raven was great. And oh my God, when she was reading Widow's shoes. Oh, that's right. You don't have a platform. Now, do you have a prescription to wear those shoes? <laughs> it was like a live episode of Fashion Photo Review. Widow Von Don't. Widow Von Don't. Oh. Yeah, it's oh. a boot. We see people like Jackie, Crystal, and Widow in the workroom giving their stories about how politics have kind of divided their families or affected their lives in a really significant way. I, I love my parents and I'm so close to them and I'm like almost like confused as to how I grew up in their house and share so many of their values when there are just some things we have this disconnect on. The show advocates for the LGBTQIA community and racial minorities and Trump is decidedly not for those communities. So that was kind of the focus of a lot of their political ire in this episode. The one thing that we all agreed on was no Trump. It's like really affected mine and my family's life. When Trump was elected, he enacted terrible racist policies, including a ban on people from Muslim majority countries. Regardless of what your politics are, you got to see some people talk about real human stories about how policies, politics affected their lives. It's a big problem that I cannot drive my car down the street without being afraid that someone's going to take my life. Everything is political, drag is political. These things don't exist in a vacuum. All right, so we go straight from workroom shenanigans to the runway. Rue is dressed as a beautiful statuesque Greek goddess, homage to the idea of democracy, I guess. Radiant like a Grecian goddess, you make me proud to be a citizen of America and the world, Rue. <laughs> Thank you. And so this week, Michelle was not physically there on the judging panel. She was calling in remotely. Hey, Dahlia, we see you back there again. She may not have been there, but 
the thirst was there. And I'm married, but you are my hall pass. You have been for years. I've seen all the movies. I know what you could do with your fly. <laughs> Jeff, please, <laughs> give me a call. One night only. Come on, it's a great time. Thank you. Okay, so getting straight into the maxi challenge. Choices 2020. Choices. 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 <laughs> Crystal was hilarious. Crystal came out with a mullet. I've proven time and time again that I mean business in the front and party in the back. She realized these are my characteristics that they like in this competition. I'm just going to come out and be Crystal Method, and it worked. It's a comedy challenge. She got it. Yeah. We can jump into Heidi. Heidi, Heidi. Heidi was bridging the gap. <laughs> Breathe calmly through the gap in your front teeth, okay? There we go. She was good, she was really cute. You know, we saw she, she read Jackie a little bit. <laughs> How can you trust a drag queen when her five o'clock shadow is visible 24 hours out of the day? Super fun, she gave great reaction face. She's always great in a character challenge. And then Widow. Widow. Widow did have a few funny lines in there. If she cannot win the war against her beard, how can she win the wars that we might have to fight for America? But overall, it came off as very, very serious. Ultimately, it is a comedy challenge. It is entertainment. The angry caricature, we see it in politics a lot, but you have to do more than just call people a terrorist. Terrorist, skinty bitches. You have to kind of go over the top and show that this personality is ridiculous. And I don't think she quite brought it there. And then, okay, Jackie. I'm as American as apple poutine. I mean, pie. <laughs> Full disclosure, I loved her Canadian shtick. We're Canadian, maybe we're biased. Again, like Widow, she just kind of stayed at the same level with the same shtick, and it had to get ridiculous. Don't mention Canada in your closing ah, statement. I'm here to tell you the Trudeau truth, because I'm clearly very American. <laughs> All right, and then Gigi. Okay, so Gigi did a bit of the robot shtick again. I'm not mad at it. You are a human girl. Human girl, not a robot. Hmm. Since she was nervous about the challenge, she didn't feel super comfortable with politics. Maybe it kind of felt safe to her and she kind of found a way to make her uncomfortableness make sense. Gigi was very much just like, I will look the part and hopefully the rest gets filled in. And she could have done worse. Jada. Jada. Jada definitely started strong. I was a little bit worried for her though, because a few times when she deflected and said like, look over there. Where? You know, it was funny the first time, but I was afraid if she did it too many times that the judges weren't gonna like it. It looked at times a little bit scattered, but overall it was quite funny, it was entertaining. I didn't want to see her in the bottom just for the amount of guts it took to just go for every single joke, every single insult. I understand what the bitches of the street need, and it's not these whores. Overall, all together as a package, that challenge was really entertaining. You had Goldblum and Bloom there together. They were funny, riffing off the queens, and obviously a lot of very snappy editing to turn that together into a very tight, you know, entertaining little package. I thought it was fun, overall. He's a dinosaur doctor. Oh. So after Choices 2020, we are going straight to the runway. Category is Stars and Stripes Forever. First. We had Crystal Method, and Crystal's look was so fun. I really liked all the mismatched pieces that she had. I thought it gave it a lot of personality. She was giving us Carmen San Diego realness. Ooh, I love that. I loved Crystal Method's outfit this week. Some of these things that I would have in the past said looked a little messy are so lovable and eccentric now. And I think that's Crystal Method's charm just coming straight through. Ooh, next we had Heidi. I love that red Betty Page hair that she had on. That was really cool. Heidi was giving us a cheerleader vibe. She looked really cool and sexy boots the house down. Hmm. Yes, mama, God. Yeah, Heidi looking cute, but a high bar on this runway. We can move on. Oh my gosh, Widow. I loved Widow's outfit. She came out with the full Black Panther salute. She had an Afro and she went for a black and white stars and stripes look. So it definitely made her stand out against the typical red, white, and blue. It was very simple and yet it was completely striking. And she had some little extra details in there too to just zhuzh it up. Like the eyebrows were kind of sparkly and the dark lipstick was sparkly. It was powerful, you know? Powerful, it stood out, it was political. She had an amazing like snatch silhouette, but also the stars coming off of it that gave it this drag quality, beautiful through and through. We love. And then we had another 
another really beautiful striking look afterwards, which was Jackie. When she came out, I was just like, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. She had a red striped caftan and she had a blue hijab covered in stars and she just looked so regal. A very political statement, right? Mixing that iconography together is really, really powerful. You could tell what her story was. And she definitely showed with that outfit. You don't have to be wearing the sexiest, tightest dress to really make a statement. It was an iconic look from Jackie. I was so here for it. It was incredible. And then cut to the colonizer. <laughs> Gigi Good. Gigi Good had a real old school soldier look, kind of a founding father thing going on, and she looks sharp. Always does. Jada. Captain America, but make it drag, make it fashion. I like this look from Jada. It wasn't as pure fashion as we normally get. It was kind of this cheerleader mixed with mascot. It had this very uniquely American campiness. The whole thing just looked like it was made out of a foam finger and that just made it work even more. Yeah, it was really over the top. It was definitely like a superhero look. I really liked it overall, but it's one of those looks where I think I liked the idea more than certain parts of it. Oh, and also we know Jada's real shoulders, even underneath, are perhaps as shiny as those shoulders. Even though this isn't what we're used to from Jada, I think it showed some really good variation for her is that she can kind of go this costumey route. So now we get into the judges critiques. Lost to say this week. We saw Widow struggling a bit. It just feels like it was all for nothing. It, you're digging yourself into a hole right now and you don't have to do that. We've said in the past that she's been getting into her head a little bit. It seems like the competition is starting to really get to her. Rue was sort of like, hey, <laughs> we know it's hard. I, I hear everything that everybody is saying to me. I just, it's really hard for me to It's hard, here. the competition's just... fucking hard. But don't, don't do that to yourself. She was really beating herself up. You could tell she had kind of defeated herself before she even got to the lip sync. What else did we see? Ooh, yes. Well, we saw Jackie get very emotional on the runway, talking about her life. It was triggered by her runway look, and then Jeff Goldblum had a couple questions. Is there something in that religion that is anti-homosexuality uh, and anti-woman? Does that complicate the issue? And so that was an educational moment. A bit of OK Boomer vibes there. Rue was able to brilliantly kind of bring it back into the context of the competition. There are so many different layers to this presentation. And if it was ever going to be done, this is the stage to do it. And I think Jackie had a really good rebuttal. It's a complex issue. I have my own misgivings about the way that LGBT people are treated in the Middle East. And at the same time, I am one. The conflict between your culture and being queer, how do you resolve those two things? Someone wants to tell you, you can't be both of these things. Sometimes it's like, no, I am both of these things and I don't want to compromise on one for the other. You can be LGBT and from the Middle East and there's gonna be complicated shit around that, and that's okay. And it was just so bold and beautiful of her to make that choice. Choices. Choices, great choices. Choices 2020 and my choice is Jackie. And this was my favorite moment of the judges critiques. I thought this was absolutely hilarious is when Jeff Goldblum got very curious about tucking. And guys, Jeff Goldblum's curiosity about tucking is just as hilarious as it sounds like it should be. <laughs> yeah. What do you do exactly? Oh. Is it is it all tucked? Is everything is tucked? <gasps> oh my God, are we at tops and bottoms and safes? Our winner this week was the fabulous look over there. It's Jada. I almost thought it could be Crystal. Crystal keeps coming a little bit close, but Jada obviously did a great job. She was funny. Heidi and Crystal were in the top and that left us with the bottom three. And so the bottom three queens this week were Widow Von Du, Jackie, and Gigi. The lip sync was between the Widow Von Du and Jackie to the song Firework. And whew, this one's going down in herstory. Oh yeah. At the beginning of this lip sync, we see Jeff is ready. Widow comes out with the same thing that worked for her last week with the Shaka Khan, just feeling the soul of the song. And Jackie comes out with the campy party trick and turns out that's the route to go for a Katy Perry song. Definitely. I mean, the second Jackie came out and started kicking that bag around, I was like, Widow's in trouble. Jackie is going for the comedy. We know she's good at that. It made sense with the song. You really could see that she was singing with just such passion and such joy and such genuine feeling. I'm feeling the weight of everyone who's ever been told they need to go back home where they come from. And I'm here to let them know that baby, you're a firework when you have a place right here 
in America. Two iconic runway outfits going head to head, different versions of what America is to them. On a Katy Perry song about fireworks on the 4th of July, it was powerful. Jackie had the most iconic moments in my mind. She was center stage and the lights were going on her in the context of RuPaul's Drag Race lip syncs. It's going down in history. Oh, absolutely. It was legendary. Widow went all in, but Jackie just was absolutely triumphant. Like we saw last week, like we've been seeing more of, this was two high level lip syncs and one person connected with the song more, kind of played with the tone better. And Jackie, Shantae, you stay. It was beautiful. <laughs> This was an incredibly powerful lip sync, and unfortunately we had to see Widow go home. And poor Widow, she definitely took it hard. I just wanted to say to Widow, no, do not do that to yourself. Widow, we will miss you, your amazing energy, your fun confessional moments, your dancing, your splits. Your beautiful brown skin. We will miss you, Widow. And you did not let anybody down. So Widow's gone. That leads us back to our scoreboard. Let me break this down for y'all. Jada gets her second win, which for the first time means that there is someone tied with Gigi Good. So Jada and Gigi are both tied for the top spot at six points. Behind them, each with one point, are Crystal and Jackie. And then bringing up the rear is Heidi with zero points. Those are our standings for the entire competition so far. Now, if we switch over to the power rankings, which are, of course, just the last three weeks, we get a very different picture too. And it really shows where the momentum in this competition is going. In the power rankings, Crystal and Jada are tied for the top spot with three points each in the last three weeks. Next, we have Heidi with one point in the last three weeks. She's been in the bottom, she's been in the top, she's stabilizing at one point. And second last in the last three weeks is Gigi Good with a neutral zero points. And then behind her, after lip syncing for her life this week is Jackie with negative two. If I can give a little bit of analysis, we see Jada, who at the beginning seemed to be coasting on one win, has now proved herself as a consistent competitor that's gaining some steam. Gigi, while she's still at the top, is losing a bit of the momentum that made her a front runner early on. So we're gonna have to see if she can bring it back up there. I'm sure as soon as there's a design challenge, fashion challenge, she'll be right in the top again. But it's really interesting to see how quickly these ranks can change based on just one or two weeks. There's like no guarantees in this thing. Nope. This nope. is not RuPaul's guarantees race. No, it is not. After everybody left, Jeff was there just like on his own, just hanging out. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow. Amazing. <laughs> What's going on, Jeff? <laughs> just gold blooming. That's it, guys. Let us know your thoughts on episode nine below. And you can follow us on Instagram at Miss Watch Mojo. Follow me on Instagram at The Beat Easy or on Twitter at Beat Easy. We'll see you again next Sunday right here on Miss Mojo. Bye. 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 <laughs>